Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello. It's great to be with you. Today, we're continuing our series here on the podcast that we've titled, What Is?, where we explore words or phrases you often find in contemplative circles, but may not exactly know what they mean. Today, we're exploring what is audio divina. And I came across this term audio divina, having never heard it in all my years of learning about spiritual practices through a spiritual formation class that was doing some experiments. And I found that I had been practicing audio divina all along. I just didn't know it. And to translate the word audio divina means sacred listening or divine listening. And it's a way that we pray. And so often in my personal life, I would come to my guitar and I would just sit and play some notes and use that as prayer and just listen. And there's a famous passage in the Psalms that talks about, and this is specific to the harp, but I think you could use any instrument. It says, I solve life's mysteries as I listen to the harp. I translated that into, I solve life's mysteries as I play my guitar. And so Audio Divina for me, and there are many other ways that you can use this Audio Divina, but for me, it's the place of discernment where I'm listening to something and I'm praying through the sounds that I'm hearing uh, as a way of discerning what is next for me. And so as I bring up this huge topic of audio divina, divine listening, what comes up for the two of you? Perhaps I'll also start with a story of a contemplative group that I was in and this idea of contemplative listening was brought up and the person facilitated wanted to play an unfamiliar piece. And so she chose a Native American tune that probably none, none of us had heard of and invited us to just listen to the music and to pay attention where our minds went, where our heart went and what we noticed. And it was just a really unique experience because I think um, a lot of times in the this group, we were invited into silence, but first having that beautiful moving piece of music and then following that, the silence, there was something rich about the contrast of, and my mind couldn't follow the tune. It wasn't like Mozart or Bach or like a familiar tune to me. And so it was just instrumental. There were no words to distract, but it somehow allowed me into a particular space that I otherwise wouldn't have. And then following silence with that was just a really rich of like I had opened up and I was able to sit in silence in a more quality way than maybe if we had just opened up with with a moment of silence or, or whatnot. And so I guess for me, and, and I'll share a little bit later in the podcast, a different type of audio divina, but just maybe building off of what you're saying with the music as one who does not play an instrument, that was really helpful for me to have an unfamiliar piece of music draw me into silence. That makes a lot of sense. Even as you're talking, I'm like, yeah, I tend to try to choose something that's maybe not so specific or that I would know. Even if I'm given the option to play something that I know, I think, oh, then I'll start singing. But yeah, as you're talking, it, it occurs to me in, in mindfulness meditation, there is this kind of stopping of the swirl. And one very meaningful way that I do that can be turning on music. Music has this very calming effect for me. And, and you can add nature tones in. There's different ways in which you could have a drone sound of any kind and even that, right? If you're like, oh, I'm really soothed by the sound of birds chirping or water flowing or fires crackling. This too is a sound that can help all of that swirl just to settle and open to that divine presence that we've been talking about. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to find divine presence. And yeah, I think even if you're not musical, as you were saying, like, I don't necessarily play an instrument, but it doesn't matter. Most of us can connect and there's something about it. There's frequency, there's vibration. And so the body starts to connect with some of that. I really love what both of you guys have brought to the conversation. And I was thinking about, I do this thing with my kids 
we're walking along and I say, Shh, did you hear that? And it takes them from this space of in their mind or in their story to an openness, a broadness, awareness. And I think that's what, that's what we're saying here, that music can bring us to this place of openness. And I'll give another story. I, I often use Audio Divina in these contemplative experiences that I, I'm a part of and I play the guitar and then we'll have a piece of poetry that goes along with it. And Christina Roberts, I appreciate what you named about it complementing the silence. But one of the things that I've used Audio Divina is with the reading of a poem and then having a bit of silence and then playing just a musical piece and then reading the poem again. And many people have said that second reading was a more expansive and opening experience than the first reading. And oftentimes uh, I've used Audio Divina just as prayer and with other people. And many individuals have said as they listened to the piece, as they were praying, as they were open, something that happens many times is their imagination goes back to an experience of childhood and an experience that they would have said was their own experience. But in the listening, the divine listening, they feel God's presence with them in those moments that they're going back to. And so I don't know if any of you have had an experience like that, but I just mention it as a way forward in our conversation. Yeah, I think it's important to clarify that music isn't just a preamble to something else. I know oftentimes in particular church circles, some different like non-denominational, for example, we spent a lot of years in, in those realms. It was like you had a bunch of songs to prepare you then to hear the message or the sermon or something like that. And um, I remember going to a church where they actually flipped that and they would have kind of the words first and then the music to prepare you to go deeper into what you just heard. And so I do think that there's that complementary piece that we're naming. But Christina, just to build off of what you're saying of the tone, the vibrations, the thing itself can also bring us into those spaces. And just thinking back to a time where I was spiritually companioning someone who was a, he was part of a band. He was a band teacher, a retired band teacher. And so brass instruments and just sounds and, and loved that. And that was a way that he connected a lot with the divine. And so it, in our sessions, I would have a, a gong that I would do and just on my phone and different tones or frequencies. And for me, it was just like a signal of, okay, our silence is done. But for him, he would just linger. And every time he would comment on the beauty of the tone or the quality of the gong. And so I was mindful to switch up when I knew I was meeting with him because there was such an appreciation. And it wasn't just like something at the end that was wrapping up the time, but there was just this like something in that was really meaningful for him in the beginning or the end. It wasn't just like a bookend for him. It was the thing. And so I think that Audio Divina can be a complimentary thing, but it can also be the thing that is the connecting point. Yes, it is funny how sometimes there's a simplicity. We've touched on this a couple of times, not necessarily a song we know, maybe just the sound of a gong. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit in this really fun experience recently, and I knew it was coming, but I didn't know exactly what it would be like, but I had a sense. So they had told me, I'm going to bring this drone instruments it's like some sort of a squeeze box and it'll play a note for an extended period of time and so at first the exercise is to just all be on one note together and then to start shifting and moving and it was this practice of harmony can you what do you feel in your body how are you interacting and harmonizing with that which is around you and this has a metaphor built into it and you get to use the sound and you get to feel all of it. And I started thinking about it. This is, we would sometimes play with dissonance in the midst of it. And what is that? What is the dissonance? And is it beautiful? Do we want to move away from it? Do we want to lean into it? What is it that we want to do? It's tons of metaphor. Such a fun thing to do. Even if you're not like all into singing and stuff like that, it was still really fun. Going back to a previous episode where we talked about sound healing and one of the, one of the things that I found to be super interesting is when several people hum something together and what that does 
for opening us up to presence and to the invitations of the spirit. And so as you both are saying these things, I, I find myself wanting to move into community spaces where you can practice these things and not only to find them, but what would it look like to provide opportunities for people to join in this type of prayer? And so I, I liken it to, I don't know if the two of you have done a, a group. Actually, I know Christina Kaiser that you've done it because I've done it with you, a group's centering prayer. And you're in each other's presence and you're just holding silence, but there's somehow a richness to it that you don't get from just doing it by yourself. And so I think practicing audio divina in a community or a group experience could have a lot of benefit to it. Yeah, I think this is perhaps another step in audio divina but i have a friend whose son does regular sound baths they're in ohio somewhere but they'll do them for like full moon new moon winter solstice this kind of a thing and his mother who is who i know will attend and has really gotten into it it is just such a spiritual experience and i think it's all the things that we're talking about there's this resonance there's this resonance between people there's this opening a stillness and I have looked into it a little bit. We, we're talking about like gongs and chimes. And these are like kind of big bowls that you bring. And they're like these big crystal bowls. I do not possess these bowls, but maybe someday. <laughs> Going back to what you said a moment ago, Christina, about sounds of nature, the bird, and listen to that. And I think that's been really instrumental in me with Audio Divina is when I'm out really having moments of it's a windy day and I'm not just feeling the wind, but like stopping for a minute on the path and just listening to the sound of the wind and really, and again, we had mentioned it in a different podcast about Visio Divina, but just practice of like sitting with something for several moments and letting yourself go deeper into the experience. So going deeper into the sound of the wind and what is that experience and just living that and, and being with that for several moments on the path. Or again, you guys mentioning the birds or things like that and just the importance of I think we can just whiz by and, and not do that. But when we're thinking, okay, this is an audio divine and I actually want to have the divine listening, the sharpness and the crispness and the amazingness of the crickets or the nature or things that are around us, it, it, it's its own orchestra. Yeah, I appreciate you naming that. I think one of the things that this image just came to me, I was actually running the garbage disposal this morning and there was a bowl filled with water that was in the sink. And there was a spoon in that bowl. And whenever I ran the garbage disposal, the spoon bounced and hit the side of the, the bowl and it made a ting. And then what the water did after that was it rippled, vibrations just rippled in the bowl. And I think what you're saying is sometimes we're out in nature and we hear these sounds and these vibrations move through us. And I, I think it just all leads to oneness, oneness with God, oneness with creation, oneness with ourselves. So I really appreciate you naming that. And I think also what comes to mind is in the, I know Chris, you quoted a Psalm earlier, but in the latter Psalms where it talks about let everything that has breath praise, right? So it's the, it's exclaiming the nature, but it's also like, it's two different Psalms. One is very nature oriented of the praise. And then the other one is the clang, the cymbal, the drum. And so the quality again of not just our own voices or not being human centric in that, but all of creation, all of life being able to give praise through our breath and through all of that. And so I, I'm just mindful of the expansiveness again of what we're describing. Yeah, there is an expansiveness to it. I agree. And we've already started talking about it, but this pairing of things at times, like I'll often pair movement with audio, which I mean, if you're in nature, you're already doing that as well. There's all these different ways, but uh, what is the opening? What is happening? What am I noticing? And even just recently, I was in a group and somebody was sharing, like, oh, there's some like serious emotion here. And someone said, oh, how would you tend to that? And they said, normally I would move, but we were about to go into a long whole thing and there wasn't going to be time for that. And I thought, how can I bridge this gap? And we started with some music with an opportunity to move, like a hike in the woods, but it's at least four minutes of opportunity to just 
how can I get some of this out? And if movement works and music is so soothing and stilling. And in the end, the whole group was like, I was so glad we did that. So that's just four minutes. Yeah, I love that. I I think the thing that we're saying is music has a, this ability to uh, bring us to a place of transcendence. And we've talked about pairing, but I think music by itself can do that. And I think particularly in the West where we're stuck in our head a lot, I think music has that capacity to connect the head and the heart. And that's the thing that I love about Audio Divina is we can, the head is a gift, the heart, the emotions, they're a gift too, but somehow, some, sometimes they're disconnected from one another. And I just love this as a practice to help connect the two. Thank you so much for having this amazing conversation. And now is the part of our podcast where we talk about what we are into. What are we into today? I am into Oh Snap Pickles. They are these little billy dilly bites, no brine added. And they're just, and it's the claim is great for on the go snacking. They are so good. They're like dill pickles, which I have a good dill pickle. They're crispy, they're crunchy, super crunchy. And they are like on the go. I brought them with a me to a recent game and my daughter was playing basketball or volleyball and our son was hungry and I busted these out and they smelled like pickles. But I try one. I was like, oh my gosh, these are so good. So I am into oh snap pickles. That is remarkable. I will have to seek these out. I have never had them. But our family is a big fan of pickles. I think what I'm into is something I'm just suddenly thankful for again. So we have a shower head. We use it every day. We don't think about it. It's just there. It just exists. But recently I was in a place that had a two inch wide shower head with like water that went every which way. And I just thought to myself, oh man, I got to wash my hair in that, which is like long and thick and you got to make sure you get all the soap out. It's a really big deal. And so I got back to our home and I just thought, look at this beautiful, wonderful shower head. Uh, it's the little things, friends. It's the little things. <laughs> well, continuing on a bathroom, bathroom note, I am into DIY. It, we had this experience this weekend where we had to replace our toilet. And I grew up in a family where we just, if something were to break down, just because of our pursuit of knowledge, we try to fix it ourselves to learn the thing or to replace the thing, probably more so than even the economical benefit that it could bring to, to the family. And I think I'm discovering that particularly about my dad. My dad was probably a person who loves to read and learn things and fix it himself. And I think he's given that to me. And after we actually, I fixed the toilet. It was not that big of a deal. It was doable for me. My oldest child who helped me lift the toilet out into the yard says, I think that's something I'm going to pay somebody to do in the future. And I said, it's interesting that you say that because out of all my children, I think you're the one that I could pass on this DI personality to because you love to learn things and know things. And my child said, yes, that is true, but I'm going to draw the line at toilets. So my bathroom experience. So good to be with you. Hope you enjoyed our podcast today. Until next time, make it a great week. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week.